Today we're going to paint this in a holographic red tiger and we're starting right now. So guys, today we're going to paint this new crankbait from Lurblacks. It's a quite big model and it already looks very cool so I'm super excited to paint this one. So guys, I just want to say these crankbaits look really awesome. They are going to be a lot of fun to paint. It's a nice big body, so um, I'm really looking forward to paint these guys. Now, first of all, it's super important to tape or mask your bill. Because if you don't do this properly, you will have paint on the bill and it just doesn't look professional. If you want your lure to look nice and clean, it is so important to tape your bill properly. Now if you look at the eye, then you will see that the eye touches the bill in the middle, but uh, in the back it doesn't. So make sure to put a little tape underneath the eye there. So I use the corner of this tape and I push it under there, like so. And as well I connect all the way against the bait, so I cover those two difficult parts at once. Then I just fold it around, cover the top and as you can see push it down again under underneath the eye here. So we cover up our bill nice and tight. So that's a quite big area covered with just one little piece of tape. Like so. Take the same size or about. We do the other side. Now there's only a little space in the back. Then I need to be taped. That needs to be taped. And then we got the whole build taped already. Now, should there be any paint on the bill in a little, little gap or something you might miss, you can always take a little water and a sponge or a little piece of cloth, and you can just uh, carefully rub it away on the bill. So you can clean the bill afterwards anyway. So, so we're good to go. So guys, because our cool crankbait has holographic foil on the inside, we want to use a transparent red uh, to cover the sides so we get a red holographic effect, which is really cool. But the top and the bottom of the lure, we don't want to be transparent, so we're gonna use white for that. But the reason we don't start with white is because if we start with white and we come back with transparent red afterwards, we're gonna cover an opaque layer with red as well, which is gonna stick out um, too much from a trans transparent red and we want a smooth transition so that's why we're gonna spray red first and then we're gonna come back with opaque white afterwards so guys now we're gonna make everything opaque white what we don't want to be transparent so that would be the back the belly the fins the the whole head with the gill plates all of that we will paint now with opaque white so I got my opaque white in my chamber here. Our holographic foil is still nicely visible. Now if you're not careful and you get too much of the opaque white overspray, you will cover your holographic foil with white and then you will not see it anymore. So be careful when spraying the white on the belly and the back. Alright guys, so I mixed up some dark transparent brown. It's very important it is transparent. So we're gonna do some shading now, some pre-shading on the fins and in the gill plates on the head and maybe a little on the mount and around the eyes as well 
just some pre-shading, some darker tones and we're going to go over that with some yellow afterwards but then you will keep those darker parts dark So guys, we've done all our pre-shading and now we're going to go back over with a little bit of white on the spots we want to be lighter again because uh, the pre-shading was quite rough so we're gonna fix that with a little bit of white again. I like to keep it a little irregular, it just gives a more realistic feel to to the fish. So guys, as you can see, that looks much better. So if we're gonna spray our yellow or transparent yellow over that, it's gonna give a nice finish. Nice effect. So guys, I got some tint down yellow in my chamber now. It's uh, quite tint down so it becomes more transparent. We're gonna spray everything that is white yellow now, uh, fins including just not the bottom of the lip because I want that to be white. Alright guys, I have some tint down orange now in my chamber and I lowered my air pressure to 1 or 2 psi. That's because we're going to do a little splatter effect to create some more depth in our lure now. So we're just gonna random splatter on the sides of the yellow and on the gill plates and around the eyes. And a little bit on the, the core of the fins as well. So guys, after a little of thinking, little thinking, I think I will do the edges of the yellow on the back with a little, little orange as well, but on a higher pressure just to make that red connect with the yellow a little bit more. Right guys, I got my detail stencil from Lurblanks here and I'm just simply gonna attach that to the back eye. Like so. And then I have some tint down black in my chamber and I'm gonna use the splatter technique again to cover up most of the yellow and orange but at an angle I wanted to shoot only forward now the reason I use the splatter technique this time is because I want to show some more yellow and orange and it also is going to give us an irregular effect with darker and less darker spots. But I also really like on this lure. So guys, a nice back splatter. It's a cool pattern. It's gonna look, look really cool with some epoxy on it. Then the black becomes a little bit more transparent again. But of course, this lure is not finished without any striping. So I already prepared a stencil for this. And the idea is to just splatter the stripes as well. That is looking pretty cool pretty special as well so guys I I can't decide what looks best with striping or without striping 
So uh, let me know in the comments down below what you like the most. You like it more with striping or without striping. So now guys I got white in my chamber and we're going to put a little white dot on the beginning of our fin just to complete that. So guys, now there's only one thing left to do and that's put some eyes on. Now these eyes I'm gonna put on come with the blank. Really cool, really special pattern. It's gonna be cool when we put some uh, clear coat on this one. This one is without striping. I really can't make up my mind which is cooler, with or without striping feels like without striping it looks cleaner so guys there we go it's a really beautiful clean pattern now when we put clear coat on this the holographic foil is going to come back and that's gonna be a really cool lure it's really nice So guys, our crankbaits are finished and as you can see, they turned out really cool by using a transparent paint, a little thinner in there and this splatter effect on the top. Now I cannot make up my mind which one I like the most, with the stripes or without the stripes. Tell me in the comments which one you like the most. Both are really cool, I, can't, I really can't decide. To tell you guys a little bit more about the crankbait themselves, these are floating, they go about one meter deep and they have uh, shifting weights. So these cast like cannons and they have a very nice swing mesh in it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use one of these for pike fishing for sure. I really like them. Also the holographic foil is amazing. When the sun is shining, this is gonna be a very effective lure. Now if you're a beginner in lure painting, then I have a great video for you right here. It's about spraying metallics and pearls on different kind of base coats. Like a black and white gives totally different uh, results, so I'm showing you that in this video. And if you're more interested in painting a natural perch pattern, then I have a great video for you right here. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye!